is coming hot. Let's see if this guy will do it. Yep, there he is. Ooh, and then I missed him. He just hung on that bait, and then I missed him. He's still there, so I'm going to go right back down to him and see if we can move him again. I don't think I ever stung him. I think he was hanging on the he was hanging on the waxworms. Here he comes. We should get another crack at this guy. I don't think he's going to let that just get by without getting another swing at it. There he's breathing on it. You can see him just hanging. There he is, got him that time. Feels like a pretty good one. You know, one of the biggest things about fishing these crappies, when they get into these deep suspended holes, or deep holes and they suspend in here, or they work the bottom, you know, wherever they may be, is you gotta remember, oh yeah, look at this one. This is a dandy, and look at how he ate this glow spoon. Hang on just a minute here. Look at that one. <laughs> That's a giant, but I wanna show you that. Look at that, he ate that whole glow spoon right down his mouth. Who says that crappies don't eat big baits? <laughs> Let me tell you, that's the kind of crappie that eats a big bait right there. You know, I, I love crappie fishing. I, I always have. And part of the reason I love crappie fishing is, is it is a challenge. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you that when it comes down to it, I think crappies a lot of days are just as big a challenge to catch, maybe even bigger than walleyes, and especially when they get out into this deep stuff. Look at that. Let's get that guy out of there. What an awesome fish. That's a, that's a great crop right there. But when they get out into this deep stuff, I'll tell you what, what becomes such a challenge is getting them to find you because there's so much water out here. I mean, these fish have the opportunity to, to roam horizontally through this whole hole. And this is a fairly big hole I'm in. But they also have the chance to roam up and down and they can find so many different food options because the other thing that happens at this time of the year is the most oxygen these fish are going to find is out in this neighborhood. So what happens is all the minnows end up out here too. The more bait you end up with out in these holes looking for oxygen, the easier it is for a crappie to find food to eat and the tougher it is to fool them because they've got so many options that are natural down there. So this is the time of the year where a lot of times I'll put away the tungsten jigs. This, this is the time where I'll say, you know what, I'm gonna go with something big. Number one, I'm gonna try to look a little bit more like a minnow, but number two, I'm gonna put down a substantial size meal because it'll catch all the different sizes of crappies that are in this hole. And ultimately it grabs their attention. I mean, I'm trying to make sure these fish, they see me from a distance. And if they can see me, if they can find me, I'm gonna be able to catch them because this isn't like when they were up on the edge of a weed line and I could really pinpoint them. And it's not like when they were on a little rock pile or on a little tip earlier in the year. Now they're out here just, to, it, it, this is big country. I mean, they can roam out here. And when they get into this stuff, I'll tell you what, this is, this is a tougher time of the year presentation wise to give them a bite. But this is that time of the year though, where presentation really just, just becomes a huge, huge thing. And using something a little bit bigger, a little bit more aggressive, a lot of times makes all the difference.